This video is sponsored by War Thunder. I started collecting Death Guard kind of by accident. A few years ago, like three, four years ago, I was buying Space Marine Heroes Series 3, which is the little Death Guard guys, kind of on a whim for my local game store. I would paint them up, have a really fun time, little one evening projects, but I didn't have any plans to start a Death Guard army. Over the course of that year, I found some things on eBay, a little Plague Burst Crawler, a Lord of Contagion, painted those up, but I never really had any plans of being a Death Guard player. But then Christmas rolled around and this box came out and I had to make a decision. I was like, hmm, I really like painting Death Guard. I think I can do a Death Guard army. And in typical 40K player fashion, I did nothing with this box for two and a half years now. It's because it has Mortarion in it and I have built Mortarion up in my head as this impossible Herculean task. So many people have painted Mortarion so well that like I can't just get him tabletop ready. I want him to be immaculate and perfect. And so I've got this idea in my head that it's an impossible task, like a 200, 300 hour project. But I think that I'm just scaring myself. I think I can totally do it. And I really want to play Death Guard on the tabletop. I've been having a ton of fun with 10th edition. So now is the time. I'm going to bite the bullet. I'm going to do Mortarion. Mortarion, the demon Primarch of Nurgle, is spread across two large vehicle sprues. He is enormous, and I've always had a weird hang-up with epic heroes, because I feel like since they're an actual character, I should be building them one for one with the lore, without any kit bashing or converting. This isn't actually a rule, I can do whatever I want, but this has held me back, and I'm excited to see my Mortarion in my color schemes. And putting them together, I was pleasantly surprised by the kit. He goes together perfectly, but also has some options. Mortarion's weapons can be swapped between hands. I don't know how I missed this. I've seen hundreds of Mortarions online. I've never noticed. I think I'll put his scythe silence in his left hand because I'm left-handed. And depending on which hand you model holding which weapon, the instructions suggest one of two different face sculpts. Well, different might be a stretch. Take a really close look at the two different facial expressions of Mortarion and see if you can spot the difference. I'll give you a few seconds. <laughs> Have you spotted it? Can you see the difference? One of the heads has a closed eye because that's the head where he's really aiming with that pistol. It is incredibly subtle. I think I'm gonna go with the two open eyes. Mortarion has a face only a mother could love, which is sad because he doesn't have a mom, but I love him and seeing him all put together, he is massive. I love his plasma pistol that is the size of a plague marine and his sight that is the definition of detail creep. Also, I just love all his little hoses that run around the armor and resemble intestines. And I can't stop playing with his bounty balls. This kit also comes with some fun nurglings like this fella carrying a tank of who knows what and a little nurgling icon bearer. And who could forget the two little flying nerglings who are cosplaying as Mortarion? Morty's all done! Oh, and he is cool. I really, really want to glue on these wings, but I know. I know I shouldn't glue them on yet because I've definitely gotten myself into situations where I put together a giant vehicle or model and then it's like impossible to paint. It's like trying to paint a basketball and holding it with one hand and then just trying to snipe out some of the details with a brush. So not yet, but I'm excited because this guy is an absolute unit. A lot like the units available in today's sponsor, War Thunder. War Thunder is the ultimate vehicle combat game ever made, and it's available both on PC and console. Take control of over 2,500 aircraft, tanks, ships, and everything in between from over 10 major nations, with vehicles spanning from the Roaring Twenties to modern jets and battle tanks. The sleek graphics and crisp sounds put you right in each battle, and with accurate vehicle modeling of each part, you know you're in for a realistic battle of epic proportions. Feel like having a more or less realistic combat experience? Well, War Thunder has got you covered. With an arcade mode featuring boosted performance, or maybe you're craving even more realism, then simulator mode is the right choice for you. The game allows you to play in a way that you love. I'm a fan of building up my collection of planes, ships, and tanks, and with such a huge collection to offer, War Thunder puts you right in the driver's seat of the most powerful war machines of the last 100 years. With a worldwide community of over 70 million players already playing in huge PvP matches, now is the time to join and experience the superior game for any fan of military history. Play War Thunder for free now by following the link in the description or the pinned comment. And new and returning players will also receive a massive bonus pack featuring a unique vehicle decoration, tons of in-game credit, and seven days of premium access. This is a limited time offer, so hurry over to receive your rewards. 
One thing I don't super love about Mortarion is his base. It's kind of just generic rocks. And it like really irks me when I'm like looking at Mortarion on Instagram and I'm just like scrolling through pages and pages of Mortarion and he's always standing on the exact same rock. It's kind of my least favorite thing about him, but I like to take that as a challenge. What if I can take my least favorite thing about the model and make it my favorite thing about the model. I took Mori's big old base and marked out a little triangle in between his legs. I wanted to have the ground splitting open underneath him, with noxious ooze spilling out. I took some cork and tore up chunks that would fit and then ground them down so it looks like the earth is being ripped open. I attached it with hot glue and added some spiky rocks sticking up into the air and off the edge of the base. To save myself some milliput, I poured hot glue in between the cork and then smoothed everything out with milliput, using a damp piece of cork to press in some detail back into the clay, and using my knife to make some cracks running through the rocks. Now for the goo, and the best goo is made of real goo. I took my Icon Bearer Nurgling and glued him right in the middle of the stream and then poured UV Cure Resin all over, pushing and pulling it into all the cracks and crevices, and then to make some bubbles, I took Nail Art Glass Microbeads of varying sizes and dropped them into the wet resin. These shiny beads sink into the goo and after locking them in place with my UV lamp, it makes for some very convincing slime. Now the only thing left is to take my Morty and press him into the still drying milliput. He leaves behind dents and these will dry hard so it'll be the perfect spot to glue him down later. I put some texture paste over the base and a small sprinkling of sand and pebbles and the base was finished. Oh, Morty is ready for some paint. <sighs> is he gonna be the absolute nightmare that I worry about or is he gonna be just really hard? Probably, probably really hard. We will see what happens. But now it is time to break out my Death Guard paint. My eight discontinued colors of paint that I use for my Death Guard. I keep them in this holiday pet themed Ziploc baggie. I feel like for how rare these are, they should probably be like in a beautiful hardwood box with velvet lining, but uh, it's time to paint. Now, Mortarion is a hero from the Warhammer universe, with quite a few novels about him, but I don't feel as pressure to get his colors just right, because he's always covered in rotten grime. My rotten grime tends to be a little bit more colorful than some of the Black Library illustrations, but it's still classic Morty. After a Zenithal, I loaded up my palette with my eight Death Guard colors, and not knowing where to start and being thoroughly afraid of how big and intimidating Morty is, I decided to just go for it. On an unimportant part of the mini, his leg. You gotta start somewhere, and taking this big project and making it into a small, achievable task takes a lot of the pressure off. I glazed blue over the leg and did some highlighting, mixing my blue and white paint, just guesstimating where my highlight should go. Then I came in with my green and glazed this over everything, to bring in a little warmth and to start to blend the different layers together. Now I can see the best looking stuff is the color saturated parts, so I used more blue and green to bring up the vibrancy of the shadow parts, and for the highlights, making up a desaturated yellow to do some small highlights. I went back and forth, glazing on more and more colors, letting them overlap and mix until I had some decently smooth transitions. It's really fun to make some transitions, not just in value, but in color. His knee is only about an inch long, but it goes from deep blue to bright green to yellow, and that variety makes this simple little part really fun to look at. Now I want to add some shading, but I don't want to lose any of the vibrancy, so I glazed a brown mix into all the cracks, and went back over these brown areas with my bright rusty red color. His leg looks so good, and I didn't need his leg to look outstanding, but I needed a win. I needed to know I've got it in me, so instead of nervous, I'm excited to spread out over the rest of Mortarion and see what happens. I don't know how, I've never tried this before, but rusty red plus blue makes a really interesting gray color that I put over his cloak and it makes for a color that's not quite cold and not quite warm. It looks really striking next to his wild poppy armor. The first actual detail on the mini is this little skull on his knee pad, and it was really fun to highlight, going over it again and again, brightening it up until it was pure white surrounded by rusty red and mustard yellow. I was really worried about this model, but now it's feeling really doable. You know what, he's not that bad. He really is at the end of the day, just a death guard. A plague marine who's 10 times the size of a normal plague marine, but just a plague marine at heart. And it's really reassuring to like, you know, you start out with that leg and it's like blue, but then you start to narrow in. Once you get to like step two, you're highlighting the top of the knee with a little yellow, bottom with a little bit of red. And then step three, you get into like the nitty gritty of where you're placing your final highlights. And it all comes together in a somewhat reasonable amount of time. I was really, really like two years apprehensive of painting this model, but now all I want to do is see him come together. Now that I have his lower half finished, I get to move on to bigger and grosser things. I decided that all his tubes are intestines and it'll be pink and his right arm will be yellow. I glazed on my highlights and mixed up darker versions of these colors to put them over and then came back in with my original colors to keep the vibrancy up. And I glazed green over top. This transparent color tints everything underneath. 
I only have these eight colors to work with, no washes or contrast paint, so I have to make normal colors do the things I would usually use my special effects paints for. I glazed brown over the cracks over and over until I had a nice dark outline around the armor trim. And while I was waiting for that to dry, I did some edge highlights on his tubes with light pink paint and glazed green into the cracks. The brown wasn't doing much damage, so I switched to green for the recesses, for his yellow armor. This difference, not just in value but in color, will help make these lines more striking. Once I was happy with the recesses, I came back in with yellow to clean it up and smooth out the blends, finishing it off with an edge highlight and putting a drop of rusty brown in every rivet. Now I've got this big empty shoulder pad. I have plenty of room for some freehanding. XIV, the 14th Legion. And I love that just the simple letters show the utilitarian nature of the Death Guard. They aren't a legion for pomp and ceremony, they just like to get the job done. His right arm is yellow, so for his left arm, I decided to go with blue, glazing it as a base over 50% and letting the other half be yellow, following the same formula of glazing until it matched his leg armor. Typically, a model will have purpose to its colors. Red helmets, black shoulder pads, but my Death Guard are random. But it works. I think it's because the color changes so frequently across the model that it's not a mess, it's a style. Mortarion is stylish. Now that I have a lot of them painted, I need to protect my time investment. I sprayed the finished parts with satin varnish to seal in the flavor. His armor absolutely glitters, and I love how it looks next to the dull gray. It's not really a dull gray, there's some really interesting stuff like a little bit of warmth and a little bit of coldness depending on how much red or blue I had on my brush at the moment, but it definitely looks dull next to that armor. And now that the armor's done, it's time to work on his moneymaker, his face. After painting for 20 hours, my palette is completely trashed, so I decided to start fresh. Clean palette, clean painting. One problem I see on a lot of Mortarians is that his face completely vanishes into the finished paint job. He is a very busy model, but it's important to make his face stand out. It's the personality of the model. One trick to making a face or head stand out is to paint it a different color. It always works. I gave him a pink face, making sure his gas mask was very color saturated, but without any of the pink, so it was separated. For his eyes, I decided to give him blind looking eyes, with a light gray pupil and a white dot in the center. He doesn't need his eyes to work, the warp gives him perfect 2020 vision. I have been painting this fella, and the paint has just slowly been spreading out over the model, like the contagion range of my Death Guard special ability, and I have finally reached the business end of this model, the War Gear. And War Gear is why you take a model in Warhammer 40,000. He has a pistol and a scythe, and he himself is no slouch. At toughness 12, 16 wounds, four up invulnerable save, five up feel no pain. Like he's pretty darn tough, but looking at his War Gear, in a way it doesn't impress. His pistol will do okay damage against vehicles, and his scythe has a sweep and a strike attack. The sweep attack is okay at killing space marines, and the strike attack is okay at killing vehicles. Like, I'm not downplaying these weapons, they are good, but he's not a squad wiper. I think what Mortarion is in the Death Card Codex is an absolute problem. He is there to draw all of your enemies' attention. You want early on in the game for your opponent to th be thinking about nothing other than, I've gotta get rid of Mortarion, I've gotta get rid of Mortarion, I've gotta get rid of Mortarion while the rest of your army marches up the board, because they can't ignore this guy, but he's not gonna be the guy who wins you the game. The rest of the army is. He's just gonna be there as the ultimate distraction carnifex. I was thinking yellow for his pistol, but I already did that color on his arm. So instead I started with darkening the gray, hiding it with a light gray, and then exploring it with rusty red, seeing how it looks in the cracks and crevices of the weapon. It's looking interesting, but it's too different. So I glazed green very lightly over everything and then hit just the tip with a little bit of yellow. Now for his scythe, hilariously called Silence, even though it has a chainsaw attached to it. And speaking of attached, is there anything not attached to this weapon? Chainsaw, rib cage, incense ball, spiky fence, fleshy crack. Games Workshop threw the entire kitchen sink at this weapon. I did a non-metallic metal with my green and yellow over the blade, and then decided everything else would be a mixture of rust and wood, making most of the weapon brownish. I think this helps give the weapon a silhouette, and be much more readable than if it was just an assortment of greens and yellows like the rest of the model. I hit the incense burner with just a little bit of blue and the ribs the same way, and I can call the silence done. Once again, sealing in the flavor with a blast of satin varnish. I think I've done all I can on Mortarion before I get him glued down to his base. I don't want to overhandle him and rub off any paint while I'm working on the fiddliest details because he's looking real nice. The last big hurdle of this guy is going to be the wings. Look at these things. They are enormous, and whatever I decide to do on them, I gotta do it four times because of the front and the back. It is gonna be a major speed bump, but 
I guess it is the price we pay for Demon Primer, because they're all the same. Angry Ron, Margaret the Red, and of course, Morty. Once again, my palette was trashed. Time to start over. I glazed green on top of each wing and blue along the bottom, wet blending them in the middle with a damp brush. Now on the front face of these wings, I want to literally make a face. I want to make Nurgle's eyes watching over Martarian. I took white paint and roughly sketched out an eye. Then I filled it in with red paint, and then I went in with blue and made two circles, one for the edge of the eye and one for the edge of the iris. I mixed pink into my red and started brightening up the white of the eye. If I only paint the eye part, it'll look too flat, so I painted some wrinkles and the edge of the eyelid around the eye with darker versions of my green and blue. Then I brightened up the parts of the eye, mixing in more white paint and glazing these over top. For the iris, I took my yellow paint and made a million little lines all pointed at the center, going over these again and again with a brighter mixture until it was looking like a big sickly eye. Then I glazed just a little red along the bottom edge. I darkened up the blue part of the wing in preparation to do some wrinkles to help this ridiculous eye look a little more natural. It's like a transition, from the free-handed eye to the normal highlighting and shading details on the wing. I put two big white reflections in his eye and then I had a saucy idea of how to spice this up even more. I want tears running out of the eyes. I made two big tear tracks and for added disgusting factor, I made the tears yellow. And boom, two big mean eyes. To finish off the wings, I dry brushed pink on all the ribbing. I was thinking about sanding off all these parts to make the freehanding a little easier, but I decided against it because I want these details on all the parts that aren't the freehanding. I used my airbrush to pump up the saturation in the rest of the wings, and then it was time for the most labor-intensive part of the whole wing, even worse than the freehanding, putting a drop of brown into every tiny little hole in the wings. And then I finished it up with putting pink over the arms. The only thing left was to glue these suckers on, and this is all I've been waiting for the entire project. The wings are on, and he is glorious! Ah, he can no longer ever be outside of line of sight of anything on the board. He is so humongous, and I also love that the little tubes on his wings kind of make angry eyebrows with the giant eyeballs on his wings. Oh, I have been painting this guy for like 30 hours, but I can see it. I can see the end of the road. It is within sight just a little bit longer. I gotta get this base ready for his highness. I put yellow over the slime. This won't be the final color. Don't worry, it won't be a pea stream. Then I laid down base coats. Brown over the rocks using my airbrush to get the color into those hard to reach spots in the cork. And green over the slime. To alter the colors, I put some drops of green and red and wet blended these into the base, and then I started putting texture into the goo with drops of yellow paint, white reflective highlights on the bubbles, and rusty red over the goo. My brushwork wasn't perfect, but I cleaned it up with a few blasts of blue from my airbrush. A little dry brushing of tan over the earth, and it was time for my fun little nurgling fella, who I decided was not just walking through the goo, but is made out of goo. I painted his little robes and banner, and he is the cutest little fella. With the base done, I glued down the prints and glued on some of his last details that I still had in sub-assembly. Then I painted his flying little nurgling friends, and these guys aren't made of goo, so I decided to go with my normal pink recipe for these little guys holding bombs. Morty does have the grenades keyword in his options, but I think he should get grenade strat for free. The chains are a little tricky to paint. Each link is too small to really do highlights and shadows, so I started with blue and then dry brushing a white. Then I glazed yellow and green over top to get them to match the rest of Morty. It was essential to paint these guys separate from the model, because look at how springy they are. After that, I threw a black base rim on the model, and he is complete. Oh, he's done. And he's glorious! Oh, usually when I finish a miniature, that new mini becomes my new favorite thing in the world, and I just like carry it around with me for the next few days, just keeping me company, like while I'm making my egg salad sandwiches, that mini is sitting right there so I can admire it. Morty! Morty's a two-hander. He requires my undivided attention. And he's probably the best model I've ever painted. Mortarian is finished. And you know what? He wasn't even that bad. It wasn't like a strenuous paint job. It was actually more fun just to see how far I could push and pull my Death Guard painting recipe. And he's like my favorite model that I painted. I've owned him for two years. For two years, he's been sitting in this box, unassembled, unpainted. For all that time, I could have had the glorious Mortarian sitting on my desk, but instead, he was sitting in a box in my basement. Oh, he is so cool, and he's here now, ready to bring the hurt to Nick and Sean and their 40k armies. All I gotta do is get the rest of my Death Guard army up and running, and then it'll be the Lord of Plague ready for the battlefield.
Don't forget to go to today's sponsor, War Thunder, through the link in the description, sign up to play, and receive your free bonus pack through the offer. It's really a lot of free supplies to get you started with playing, and you don't want to miss out on the sweet in-game loot and supplies, only for a limited time. Morty is looking really good, surrounded by our pestilent forest terrain. Link in the description. Thanks for watching.